Namaskar. We welcome you to our Women Empowerment Series today. We have Inga here from Canada and we would love to share her inspiring story with us on our series. Welcome, Inga. Hello, Naveena. Thank you so much for having me here. It's such a privilege um, to be here. You know, um, I've seen what you and Yaha Life are doing online, and I think it's fantastic. So I'm really honored that I can be here. Hello, everyone. My name is Inga, and I am the CEO and founder of We Got This Admin. I'm an executive administrative consultant and business coach. I also serve as the executive mo- as an executive board member for Heart to Heart Business or H2HB, and I am the Canadian executive director for that same company. I am originally from South Africa, but I'm currently residing in Canada. And uh, what can I say about myself? Well, since um, since I left high school. I really wanted to go into the field of IT or industrial sociology, and that's what I studied. But my career found me because I love people, and I just love to help them succeed in life in general, whether it is, you know, your personal life or your professional life. That's what I like to do, Um, just being there in the background and helping others. Um, so once I, I finished up at university, I actually became an executive assistant and I did that in the corporate world for almost 20 years. While I was doing that, um, I had a yearning to become an entrepreneur, but I was afraid of failing. I'm sure we all know what that means, um, because most of us have a fear of leaving our comfort zone. So for me, it was the same thing. I was really afraid just to to leave my comfort zone and step out. And because I was really um, confronted by the, the fear of failure. So in 2018, I lost my job due to corporate restructuring. And as I said before, I had a yearning to become an entrepreneur. And that would have been the perfect segue for me to leave the corporate world and start out on my own. But I didn't. I continued to look for my next permanent home in terms of where I would work. So I applied for different positions and I worked as a temporary executive assistant all over Toronto where I live, but never thought that I could actually do it and step out of my comfort zone to become an entrepreneur. Fast forward to 2020 when the pandemic hit. Man, this pandemic has impacted all of us. Yes, mostly in a negative way, but some of us have taken some positivity out of it. And I can say the same for myself because in 2020, when the pandemic hit, I actually um, was given another opportunity. And yes, I could have started looking for work again because what happened in Toronto, downtown Toronto was put into a strict lockdown and the company that I was working at had to close their doors. So essentially I lost my job again, but guess what? I didn't go out and become an entrepreneur. No, I still was afraid. But it was a sort of a blessing for me because I have three kids and my kids' school was also taken to virtual. So I was able to help them to navigate that space. Once school was over, a friend actually reached out to me and asked about, you know, um, what I was doing. And... I had a very pivotal conversation with her. She asked me and I told her that at this point, I was betwixt and between looking for my next permanent home and starting out on my own. 
but I was afraid. And she said, so why don't you start? I said, well, I'm just, I honestly, I'm too afraid to do it. And what she said to me was, well, if you fail in your own business, you can always go back to the corporate world. And it was as if a light bulb went on. I, the, right then and there, I realized that, yeah, she was right, actually. A lot of the time we think that failure is ultimate or failure is permanent. It's not. When you fall as a baby, you pick yourself up and you continue along the way. But why do we as adults think that failure is so permanent? So... Anyway, because she said that, and because I had this epiphany, um, I decided that I was going to try my own business. And I, I worked with somebody that she introduced me to who walked me through the steps of becoming an entrepreneur and registering my own business. When I did that, it was so empowering. I registered my business at the end of July. And two weeks later, I started working with my first client. When I was doing this during the time, I remember thinking, thinking that it was taking too long and being so frustrated with the process. But now when I look back, I realize that actually it wasn't that long. So I did that. I registered my business at the end of July, started working with my first client in two weeks, and I haven't stopped. It has been a wild ride, but a wonderful journey. And I'm so grateful to be able to be here today. Thank you very much, Inga, for sharing your story with us. Would you Thank like you. to also share um, what uh, do you do as a director of Hedge to Hedge Bay in Canada? Well, H2HB in Canada right now, um, we are at the point of, we haven't launched yet. We're still working on, um, on establishing our nonprofit organization. However, um, I'm in the process of recruiting. So looking for, for businesses that want to be part of H2HB. Um, I'm also at the point where I'm traveling to South Africa to visit family in, in the new year. And um, it, I have decided actually, uh, it was through a friend of mine, we were, we were talking about it and I, I felt like, you know, when I travel, I don't just want to go to, um, to go and have a vacation. I want to be able to do something on behalf of H2HP. So right now we're planning um, an event that is going to address period poverty. Because as I'm sure as you know, period poverty is everywhere, especially in these third world countries, right? Um, I know that most people wouldn't think of South Africa as being a third world country. But there are parts of South Africa that are like a third world. And there's so much poverty there that there are people that have to decide between having a meal for their family or buying feminine hygiene products for their daughter. So it's our mission to go there and have an event that will address this issue that is worldwide. And I'm sure it's an affliction in India as well. So what you're saying is true, and it is true for uh, people in many parts of the world uh, mm -hmm. where they are not uh, either aware on how to take care of themselves um, because of lack of understanding or mm -hmm. the methods that they are using are not hygienic enough. So it is, it is a sad fact that uh, you know they need women need education on and people like you who are uh, wanting to work on it i really applaud your cause thank you, you. Want to stand up for something like this and support women learn <sighs> such an important subject thank so, you thank you you're welcome so, uh, on uh, as this is the women empowerment series i wanted to ask you 
what is your understanding of women empowerment and how do you feel that you are contributing to women empowerment in your own way please share your journey oh um <laughs> you know most of the world and i think this is just because of traditions going way back we you know we like to believe that we are working towards a better tomorrow for for our kids right um but you know in the workplace in just in daily life women are not being lifted up women are not seen to be equal to men and unfortunately what also then results is women in power actually don't help others that are beneath them and so you know for me women empowerment is that we are all equal all women are equal and we can make an equal contribution to society as men so to me i need i believe that we need to lift each other up and not press each other down there is enough negativity in this world and what i'm doing to to um to contribute to this cause is i i want to highlight women within my network that are making a difference i started off you know um everybody starts off in linkedin joining linkedin because <laughs> you're looking for a job right and for me that's what I, i wasn't really thinking about expanding my network greatly i was just i just joined linkedin so that i can i can join the conversation i guess right but in february of this year i decided that i was going to change the way that i use linkedin and instead of just consuming content i was going to produce my own content and so i started off on a wednesday where i was highlighting women that are part of the tapestry of the world that are you know but in the past so these women that i was highlighting were people that i felt were wonder women that made an impact on society but had passed on and nobody knew about them and then i was inspired by somebody that's in my network that i met on linkedin and her name is common murphy common murphy has such a deep love for her network it is not superficial at all she just genuinely loves people and so she shouts out people to uh, through her posts and i remember feeling looking at what she does and saying to myself you know i would love to be able to do this and so what i did was i took my wonder women series and i changed it and i decided to start lifting up other women by shining a spotlight on regular everyday women that are part of my network and i started it with common murphy at the beginning of may she was my first one that i i did and i've been doing it ever since i'm just so grateful that i'm able to do something like this where i can now highlight other women that are making a difference but that nobody knows about they're still alive and they're part of my network which is so awesome to me i also started my own um youtube channel it's called inspiration from inga and what i envision that i would like to do at some point is to begin interviewing these women that have now been a part of my wonder women wednesday series so that's what i'm trying to do for women empowerment because i want to be able to show others that yes we are everyday women but we make an impact regardless of who we are you know so true when you say that uh, on many points i agree with you on that first of uh, starting off with common mafishi is an amazing woman 
and I'm so grateful yes. and I'm honored that I got a chance to meet her and you on LinkedIn. It, LinkedIn wow. is truly an amazing platform. Thank and, you. Yes, and yes. I really value what you're doing on every Wednesday, highlighting women who are out there. Uh, we are on LinkedIn to basically add value to others. And this is the best way to do it is to showcase them and share what they are doing on a daily basis. That yes, way, absolutely. We will be able to spread a good word about them to others. You, have, you come out with a person who has got a lot of kindness uh, and love for everybody out there. I truly wish you all the best in whatever work you do. Uh, for the last question of the series today, I would like to ask you, what message would you like to give to everybody out there? Um, hmm. I'd like to say that, you know, um, we can all make a difference in no matter who we are, no matter what we do. Start small. Um, for me, it is important that I am here not to make an income. I'm here to make an impact. And that is what I strive to do every day. And that is what I challenge you, your viewers, and everybody watching this. Strive to make an impact. The, in, the income will come. God will bless you if that's what you do. I agree with you totally on that. We are here to make an impact to help others uh, in, get inspired through this beautiful talk of yours. That's one of the reasons I had you come over and talk on this beautiful Women Empowerment Series. And I Thank really, you. you're welcome. And I really hope people, uh, viewers on LinkedIn and uh, YouTube channel who have got a chance to see your video today, take away any kind of inspiration and apply it to their own lives to help themselves and help others spread this beautiful love and kindness that you share with us today. Thank you very much again, Namaskar. Thank you for joining us. Namaskar to you too. Take care. Thank you for having me, Naveena.